Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to part 14 of my French National Worker State campaign here in Hearts of Iron 4, uh, KX. Now, while we wait for the war with the Netherlands to happen, we've got quite a bit of excess uh, units, or uh, I should say equipment, so let's go ahead and start building more of these uh, heavy divisions, which I think kind of do that. Um, there's just more divisions in general, just because uh, I'm gonna, I, I need to start thinking about covering my coastline, and I also need to start thinking about, um, oh, I just noticed that uh, Germany released Denmark, uh, and I need to think about what I'm gonna do in terms of invading the French national state at some point. Also, um, I might do it once this mechanized is done. I need to improve my anti-air guns, which will only take a very brief amount of time. And then those ones I'm going to make a variant of, uh, just because, again, we're going to be using them for essentially the rest of the game. Uh, so no reason to not do that, I think. Jim Larkin, that's right. Uh, we're getting some resistance to occupation over here, or in Flanders. Do I have any... Yeah, I got a couple of agents who aren't really doing anything right now. One of you is already cracking down on resistance in Flanders. Um, we've got some of you down there. Um, I don't know. Like, Okay, we're about to recruit a new operative. I don't know who I'll have this person talk to. But uh, let us... tell you what here's what we're gonna do here's here's actually the trick I forgot that I was doing this actually um, we're going to bring this guy out in just a second check this out see here's what you do you bring him out tensions arise within the Cerulean's <laughs> let's train him a little bit uh, wait all right, so uh, after the death of Georges Valois, the Cerulean's have split between several factions inside the party, the largest and most influential ones being the Vanguardists, led by Marcel Diet, or Marcel, or Marcel Diet, that's the one in the picture, and the ultra-nationalist syndicalists led by Marcel Bucard. Both of the factions have been actively fighting for dominance over the party and absorbing the smaller factions in an attempt to rival each other. The Vanguardists have the most influence over the Cerulean aligned unions and the Old Guard members who were involved in the founding of the Cerulean's and the Old Guard comma members who were involved in the founding of the Cerulean's uh, and while the ultranationalist um, while the ultranationalist syndicalists have the loyalty of the Revolutionary Legion caught between the crossfire is the newly inaugurated president of the Cerulean Council, Pierre Laval, or Laval who has uh, forged close relations with both factions in an attempt to maintain some sort of stability. Um, okay. So, I'm pretty sure that I've talked about Marcel Diet before. Uh, probably in the context of... Let's see, oh yeah, can it get any worse? Ah, no, I'm going to lose 100 political power. Damn it, that actually sucks because now, yep, yep, screw me. I, uh, now I can no longer, uh, be just, well, well I, yeah, my justification has now been canceled <sighs> on, uh, on the Netherlands. That's extremely annoying. Anyway, uh, we're about to, yeah, get these trained up. How much manpower is in this? There's 26k. Okay, yeah, I think I'm doing this right. Uh, all right, watch this. So you see how these guys are trained. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them over here with our tanks and switch them over. We don't have all the tanks that we need apparently. Uh, ooh, that ain't good. Yeah, so if I've done this right, um, nope, I, did, I guess I did it wrong. I thought because the manpower was lower, they actually would not lose experience. Evidently, that's incorrect. Uh, but it's still fine. We're just gonna, yeah, try to get these out. 
even if they're not like they're not going to be the veterans that some of these others are. Well, they're, these are technically not veterans. Yeah, they're seasoned, but still very very good. Blackguard launched bombing campaign in response to civilian aggression and discrimination against anarchists and anarcho syndicalists. The Blackguard have started a bombing campaign, bombing any business office administration related to the civilians. Do these animals have no stability? Threat of anarchy will increase. It's going to hurt my stability and my political power. So now I'm 136 in the hole. And at minus 15% stability, this is awful. 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 You kill your leader and everything falls apart. Or I say your leader gets killed and everything falls apart. Who, who, could, have, who could have predicted this? Um, Triple Italian Republic has capitulated. Okay. Morocco's not doing much. I don't see any indications of uh, any the Kunming of any sort of uh, what do you call them? Uh, naval invasions. So I guess my allies are kind of taking care of things for me. Yeah, like the Germans, the Union of Britain, and such have already started to uh, put things together for me. So we probably don't need this freaking many people there on the border with the Netherlands. That's probably a little bit of overkill. Let's just put some of these over here, Prussia or something. Um, oh, did, did I just make a front line with the whole Eurasian block, or at least down to Slovakia. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to fix these areas here. I'm sorry about that, guys. But Balkan's going to Balkan, and yeah, I could get the straight state transfer tool, but I'm pretty sure I have to have that from the beginning of the campaign. Oh well, these things happen. Um, how am I doing in terms of trade? Need a little bit more chromium, or... Okay, we're having trouble, it looks like, getting stuff from the Philippines. Hmm. Okay, this is really strange. The naval, naval route efficiency is not good. Uh, okay. Let's then trade with somebody we can. Oh yeah, we don't have to trade with Russia anymore. Or, whoops. Close that out. Or, hold on. Okay, Cuba, give me all you got. We're close to it. Um, Nkaish, I don't even know what that is. Try to find out what nation that is. It's somewhere here in Asia. Oh, the freaking Japanese. So, yeah, there's something going on in the Pacific that I'm not able to trade particularly well with the people out there. Um, trade influence with the Republic of South Africa is too low. They're not going to work with me. What can we get from Sweden? That's enough. Yeah, great. That worked out. This hat, Gustav. Uh, okay, now let's grab the... Yeah, this is only going to take a few days. 14 days uh, for the anti-air. Just to, just to improve it real fast. <laughs> Kingdom of Burma has capitulated. Uh, now, let's also get... Well, we're all, we've almost filled it up. Let's get these guys over there. Cool, so we have those 24... And we could still create more of these. How many more? What I might do is uh, just keep making the 40 wits, and then uh, once I get the opportunity, switch some of them over to Marines. It just might be a little faster that way. And I'm going to make that new template in this moment. Um, I might get signal companies, actually, <clears throat> once I'm done with this. I need to get signal companies. I'm already working on logistics. Yeah, there's a few things I could do. All right, new operative. Get Marie and uh, you know what? Maybe we can kind of help screw up the Italian Federation. I probably should have done this before, actually. Okay, now are these two done yet? No, soon. Come on, come on. Yeah, I know, I know my leader died. You think things would have been a little bit more exciting here at the start? Uh, let's let's also send some more lend lease over here. Uh, we're gonna modify it. Let's uh, send them once. Um, oh, who knows? There. 
I think they don't have enough convoys, so I probably should have given them convoys. That seems to be what's slowing them down. Any more inter oh what is this? Pierre Laval calls for Cerulean unity. Pierre, current president of the Cerulean Council, which is currently acting you said current twice in the same sentence. Which is currently acting as the interim government has called for unity in the Cerulean Party in response to the factional division. Uh, he has called for the vanguardists and ultra national syndicalists to uh, to make peace until the Black Guard insurgency is dealt with. In his most recent speech to the council, he stated it would be useless to fight for dom dominance over the nation if the party cannot even assert dominance over its internal affairs. Okay. Uh, so, we could say Laval's right. France requires unity, or get off the fence and pick a side. <clears throat> Alright, so my guts tell me we have to say get off the fence and uh, pick a side, because then he'll choose the next leader or whatever. And also, it's only a minus 10% stability as opposed to Laval's right. France requires unity, which is minus 18% and minus 50 political power. And yet I kind of feel, excuse me, I feel that it being so harsh, it's early in the morning, very early in the morning here. <clears throat> no, not very. Um, <clears throat> but I feel that it's so harsh that maybe if we do this, then you crush the Black Guard right away. And so that's the price. You gotta you gotta give a chunk of political power and stability early. Because I think the anarchy stuff is just gonna keep getting worse. So this on paper does not seem smart, but I'm gonna go with uh with that. Incidentally, I think this is the Pierre Laval who was uh who was a socialist in real life, although he later left the Socialist Party. Um and was uh briefly the Prime Minister. But he was kind of a, you know, if I'm being perfectly honest, I actually don't know a whole lot about him, but uh, like I think he started as a socialist, and then he was a pacifist, and then later became right wing. Uh, I know that he, he was a part of the of Vichy France, and that's why when um, the Allies invaded France from the north and south and they started to liberate it, he, uh, he, he fled the country. Um, and eventually Charles de Gaulle had him executed. Okay, what is this? The Albanian Socialist Republic still labors under French control. The Albanian military has asserted enough control in its own borders that the semblance of autonomy is now possible. No longer an occupied puppet. Okay, well, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I guess that's good. All right, let's let's uh, let's get the new anti-air in here. Um, ooh, I'm missing a lot of factories from some of these areas. Hmm... Can I still, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, wait, a couple things I want to do. We're going to send those out. And look at us, look at us with all these heavy tank divisions. Uh, we're going to be slightly under what we need, so that no more heavy tanks for now. But the uh, anti-air, yeah, we've got to redistribute some of these. Okay. Uh, anti-air armament... That's the whole point of these, so oh my gosh, that just destroys my reliability, doesn't it? Okay, that puts me at exactly 100. Uh, no sense in boosting my... Yeah, let's just let's just leave it there. It's at exactly 100. That's fine. Well, I, I've got it. I should use it. No, but you see, any, anything else I do, the reliability starts to break down, I think. Oh, not for the engine! Okay, that's interesting. Wait a minute, then. So, the Valois, what's its speed? It's going 5.3 miles per hour right now. Maybe this is what I should be speeding up. So I can get it up to 6.4. Hmm, that's interesting. How much is that speed really going to help, though? Probably not a lot. Yeah, let, let's just... One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Uh, more anti-air and boost that reliability up as well. Um, well, you know what? I guess we might as well spend it. So we can get up to a 5.8. Okay. Yeah, huge boost to the air attack there. So we definitely want that. Um, oh yeah, we gotta rename it too. We'll call this the Pierre. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, now let's just switch it out. Okay, so now I need to sort sort this out a little bit. How's that look? Mm, still still kind of short. Um, how's that? Better. Um, better, and I guess it'll have to do. What's this? Mechanized equipment. Oh yeah, I have no intention of making that. And we got the advanced submarine holes, whatever. Okay. Now, uh, research. We were going to do signal companies, right? Yes. Oh, we could do them very, very fast, yeah. I think we'll put some of those in my tanks, and we'll also uh, maybe get them in my marines later. Uh, that could be that could be good. All right. Now, uh, oh my gosh, it's already been 15 minutes. Let's yeah, let's. Uh, but we're almost done with the who shall lead, so maybe we're gonna get something. Yeah, this is gonna hurt. I'm gonna gain the Black Guard insurgency effect. Damn it all. At least my political power popularity is still somewhat high. So, we should now, or not quite yet, Vanguard of Sorel. Oh, whichever one of these we get, it's gonna, we're gonna get a daily political power gain. Oh, here we go. Diet and Bucard reign in their factions after the tense vocal altercation, altercations between Marshal Diet and Marcel Bucard. Marcel, Marcel. Uh, which left the Cerulean's fractured into two camps. Our glorious defender of stability, Laval has used his influence and respect to cool tensions at the first Cerulean conference following Chairman Valois' assassination. Both men stood on stage with Laval and expressed their newfound determination to maintain unity for the sake of avoiding anarchy. How long will the ceasefire last? All focus must be put on destroying the anarchist menace. Okay. Um, so I guess I should talk briefly about who, who Deet is. All you really have got to know about him is that he was the founder in our real timeline of the collaborate, uh, collaborationist party. I think it was the party, yeah, that worked with Nazi Germany during uh, World War II. Uh, so so that's often how it is in Kaiserreich. The people who were fascists in our timeline become the totalists in theirs. Uh, also, like... Um, like uh, Pierre Laval, he fled the country after um, after uh, uh, France got liberated. But I think that he just died in exile before he was arrested, before de Gaulle could get to him. And then, uh, and then Bucard is the one who we're gonna be playing as. So I'll talk more about him once he's in, in actual power. So I guess let's just probably wait for some sort of pop up. Um, let's see how many days. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure a pop up's gonna happen soon where it'll tell us what leader to pick or whatever. Mm. How am I doing in terms of rubber? Rubber, I'm fine. I've got a little more chromium than I need. I'll try to get it from Sweden because it's close to home whenever I can. But yeah, leave that alone. Uh, okay, the support equipment. You know what? I probably should get some MPs to deal with this uh, Flanders resistance thing. Okay, 42 days of heavy tank, or 42 heavy tanks short. It's gonna take like a week. Okay, I think we can start training up another one. I'm actually kind of running out of uh, manpower because <laughs> because uh, of my expensive 40 width habits. Okay, 547. Hmm. Get that up, because uh, I want to give this to Italy. So there should be an event for that. Give it, give it a minute. Uh, nope. Do I have to take Fate of Malta or something? What's going on? Uh, okay, I think I just got Malta for free by accident, uh, even though I didn't want it. Well, if, uh, if it doesn't cost me political power, whatever, I guess. Or, oh, there it is. Fate of Malta. Uh, yeah, transfer to our Italian ally. There you go. Socialist Italy, you are very welcome. All right, we're going to get a pop-up. It's Christmas. Uh, White Ruthenia has joined the Entente. 
Wait, what? No, 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 no. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They could just do that? <gasps> oh, the whole everybody. F oh, shoot. Oh, no. How does that work? Was that... Okay, Russia looks like they're in the middle of a tree. So I don't think Russia was the one that was able to do that. I think... Did Ruthenia flip and then if all of their allies flipped too? Was that a bug? How did they do that? It didn't say Russia flipped. It said... Uh, join the intermittent... I don't know what's happening. Oh, no. Oh, oh that's bad. That's bad. Um... All of this is about to enter the war against me because we're technically still at war with the Entente. Oh, sh shit. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, okay, okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Just think. Um, okay. We need to move over here. Um, or can I not? No. Um, oh, damnation. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put some of you here. Um... Some of you here? Uh, okay. Or, oh my gosh. Um, let me think here. Uh, okay, delete that. And, okay, 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 okay. Uh, I need to, all right, we've got the, the Slovakia borders covered. We want half of you here. And uh, you're gonna do something like this. And then uh, we're going to split that up to a smaller portion. Our viewer are going to go here and do this. Um, but we only got six divisions there, so... We can't cover everything, can we? Um, okay, what do we got? 12 and 12. All right. Um, we can't cover all of this. Ooh boy, this is an issue. Okay, um, I've got I've got infantry queued up. How much? Seven. How many of them can come out? A few. All right, let's start making another army as backup uh, to move wherever they need to be moved to. Uh. Infantry leader, da, 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 um, sack commando out of supply reconnaissance. Yeah, you, whatever. Um, Guerrilla fighter could be good. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Yeah, sorry guys, I just need to kind of get everything together. Uh, oh yeah, I just realized this is still the J&J &J Cindy armies. There we go. Um, okay, we shouldn't we shouldn't be taking any focuses unless it's the Cerulean thing because right now we we're so deep in the hole anyway. Okay. Um, how big is Russia? Meaning its army? They certainly have more factories than I do. That's a problem. And they almost certainly have more divisions as well. No, they, they absolutely do. They absolutely do. Especially when you consider everybody else. But I've got allies too. Uh, this will work out, I think. Alright. Where are we going to kill? Where's the killing field? Prussia, right? Prussia has... It's a lot of forests. But I think I'm getting close to becoming a ranger. 68% there. And it's better than down here. Because down here it's like mountains and stuff. Uh, actually, no, there's a couple of planes here, but... I don't think it would be very smart to... Yeah, no, this would be a very bad place for tank warfare. There's too many mountains, there's too many rivers. And over here, like, in Poland and stuff... Okay, we're gonna come over here to Prussia. This is where we're gonna... This is where we're gonna kill a lot of freaking Russians. Let's kinda get... Yeah, just over here to Stenton for now. The good news is I have quite a few um, tanks these days. Okay. Let's think, let's think. Uh, I'm gonna need more planes. For sure. What have we got? We've got some people out here. I'd like to train them up, but I just don't think I have time. 
Okay. They're not getting called in. Okay, are we not uh, Russia? Oh, yeah, that's right, we had a non-aggression pact, but they just canceled it. Um, there it is. The entire world, the entire Eastern European world is coming in on us now. So if I do this, yep. Oh, these little bastards. Are they not going to call in Prussia and Poland because I've got my best troops there? You little punks. Um, it says here that it's an inferior enemy and I've got friendly air superiority in this area. Okay, well that's good. Um, what we're probably going to do down here in the south is maybe something like... Um, okay. We're going to assign this to them. Because there's just too much in this area. Okay, now I think I have some planes that are... Yeah, they're just kind of stuck here. Let's do that. We don't need them flying over France anymore, I think. Close air support. Let's get you here. And where else do I have some close air support? You. Okay, that's already assigned somewhere. Um, didn't I have more close air support than this? I guess not. Oh, yes, because I'm mostly working on the fighters. Okay. It's going to work out. Alright, logistics companies are done. Um... We could improve them, but I think we might have bigger priorities now. So how about we we could try to improve our s artillery a lot, a little bit. We have those in my tank divisions. And yet, I think there's probably better things we could do with our time. Oil. More oil. We are going to need a lot of oil as we venture deep into the heart of darkness that is the Russian state. It's a long road to Moscow, but we got to walk it. Well, this gives me something to do, at least, while um, <laughs> while I'm uh, uh, fighting, uh, or while I'm doing the Cerulean thing. These punks, they're not going to call in Prussia! You bitches. I don't know how else to describe it. They're just being bitches. Um, wait, do I have to, like, call these guys into the war? What's going on? Aren't I at war? I'm hitting, I'm hitting attack. Err. Or, oh no, this is the one that are down here. Friendly air superiority, some divisions are still not in position. You know what, just go for it. Let's just see what, what it looks like. Alright, I'm sorry, am I missing something? Why am I not at war here? Um, <clears throat> did I miss something here? Is Ser Serbia is at war with me, and yet I don't seem to be actually capable of attacking. Oh, there we go, Prussia just got called in, that's what matters. But why am I not able to um, attack into Serbia? Okay, I am, and it's the green bubbles. So is there a bug going on? Okay. Uh, I'm actually wondering if I need to get some field hospitals after all. How's my motorized look? Ooh, I do not have the motorized for field hospitals. Um... Okay. The anti-tank rifles could be good. You know what? I should improve my artillery because I have it in my 40 widths now. So it's time that I stopped neglecting it. Although, as I've said before, artillery sure ain't what it used to be. We're not getting any events, but you know what? We're just going to uh, save up the political power. Oh, you know what? We still have that war declaration coming against uh, the Netherlands. We are going to still go through with that, actually, uh, as soon as possible. We'll we'll sign our guys over here for that. Okay. <sighs> Playing that Mars song ripoff, Mars movement ripoff right now. Um, okay. Poland just got called in. Alright, we're going to slow things down ever so slightly. Okay, again, I don't know what is going on here, but we should be pushing forward more. Okay. Mostly looks pretty good now. Okay, my tanks are gonna get out of control though if I don't micromanage them. So let's try to keep an eye 
Uh, the key is, of course, encirclements. That's the name of the game. So we're gonna try. We gotta do small bites. We have. We cannot afford to get greedy. I think when it comes to our uh, encirclements, it's a long road to Moscow. There's no rush to get there. Heck, you know, I was I was gonna say this before with the whole ending of the first, the Second World War. When you get right down to it, even though millions of people died, Second World War in this universe, uh, the way it had played out, is definitely not as bad. Uh, heck, in our own timeline, it takes till December 1941 before the United States even gets involved. Although, yeah, the the CSA is gonna lose, and that's gonna be long. That's gonna create long term problems unless um, I don't know if there's a way to force them to like let Mexico. You know, exchange troops, but if the, the yeah, we got the CAR here making a comeback. They lost as soon as I left. I could have helped them secure Florida, then I would have come up the coast and defeated the Federalists. They were able to hold off Canada for a while, but this was the choice I made: take out Germany early, or uh, or help them out. So this is going to be a long-term problem if the Pacific states or whoever ends up winning um, joins the 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 Entente as well. Can we, uh, we can ask for military access. We might be able to figure something out. Okay. <clears throat> now, our tanks. Micromanaging. We should do it. Uh, wait, one, two, three, four. Aren't I supposed to have six yeah. tank divisions? Yeah, they're right here. Hmm. How are we doing in terms of air superiority in the east? Oh, quite good, quite good. Oh, there it is, nice. This, then we'll end it on this. Cerulean Council elects a new leader. Now that the major threat has been dealt with, it is time to get back on track and finish what was started. The two major contenders are Vanguard faction leader Marcel Diet, who is very popular among the old guard of the Cerulean's and Union establishment, and ultra-national syndicalist faction leader Marcel Bucard, who is very popular among the Revolutionary Legion and the common people of France. The results are now in, and the Council has voted for... Uh, Marcel, Bucard, they both give the same amount of stability. We are still deeply, deeply, deeply in the negatives. Uh, gosh, part of me almost wants to, or do I have to, what's going on? Do I have to wait till midnight? Okay, it's not letting me do this. Uh, well, we'll figure out what's going on in the next episode. So I'm conquering history games, and in that next episode, we're gonna, we're gonna start fighting Russia. Uh, it looks like I'm getting a lot of red bubbles down here in the south, so I think we're actually going to stop attacking. Um, I would kind of like to get to... Well, that's not going to work. I was going to say maybe I could get to Bulgaria to shorten the front, but no, we're not going to shorten the front until we get to Constantinople, really. So, the goal then, we've just, we're have just we gonna, we're going to fight over here in the Prussia and Polish area. We've got six whole heavy tank divisions. That's a ton. And encircle and kill, encircle and kill. We it's, we can't, we're not going to be able to wear down Russia in terms of uh, manpower, at least not just yet. But I think we can probably annihilate these uh, you know entire countries here in terms of their uh, recruitable population. Well, like some of these, yeah, yeah, like Prussia right now. Admittedly, they're on volunteer only, but they have extremely little uh, manpower. Okay, you know, that's not a good example. I should do, like, Poland. Yes, yeah, so, like, Poland has 11 divisions, and, okay, like, less than 150 deployed. They're also on volunteer only, but I think that we could, we could, we could hit a point where we're killing the enemy forces faster than they could be replaced, even if they change their conscription laws. Uh... And so then the east will fall very quickly, and then we can sit. And then once we kind of get here on this line from the uh, the Baltic to the Black Sea, it's a relatively short line, and uh, we'll be able to deal with Russia in due time. Uh, what's kind of helpful to us is that the Ottomans are actually still technically fighting the Cairo Pact. Uh, Iran is dead, but still, that's going to help us a little bit, because I sure don't want to send my tanks here into these mountainous areas. Okay, I've already been said like three times I'm going to end the episode, but that's it. That's it for today. Um, hopefully at the start of the next episode we're going to get some sort of event pop up and my picture will actual cha actually change. I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye.